Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking about killing your excuses. Everybody has them. Sometimes we get in a funk. Hopefully this helps you. Hopefully you get out of the funk if you're in it. And if you're not in a funk, awesome. High five to you. You may be. So let's talk about it either way. So stay tuned. WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is going on? Uh, thanks for having a look around. If it's your first time, take a look around. Tons of episodes. Better than a cat video. Yada, yada. I say it every intro. But if you are one of the cool kids, one of the certified cool kids, look at that. <laughs> you're somebody who watches every episode you make sure to thumbs up the video and more importantly you have ordered your supplies through me thank you what's up it's like that virtual high five of epicness thank you so much for doing so and if you want to be one of the cool kids uh let me know i would love nothing more than to put your order in. i want to put all orders in my number is 862-312-2026 shoot me a text be like yo jersey it's all in my cart just make sure you're logged in and we'll get the order in. It costs you nothing extra. I make credit for it and I can put gas in my Ferrari that I don't have. Uh, no, I do genuinely appreciate it, guys. If you are ordering through me, that is how I make my cheddar. So thank you. Thank you. If you think you got something out of the podcast and you want to be like, ah, I want to give this dude a, a hearty pat on the back, order from me. That would be super awesome. Also, if you are listening to this, with which most of you are listening Take a second and do me a huge favor and just leave a review. Leave a review wherever you listen to the podcast. That helps the algorithm. Uh, it helps me and uh, feel a little bit better that I'm doing something uh, worthwhile. So thank you uh, for doing that in advance. So anyway, uh, so today we're talking about killing your excuses. Now, I saw a post from a friend that basically he is back on that kind of uh, mental drain side of things where everything is just like, ugh, right? We got out of COVID. Well, not out. But we got out of like the work disappearing from COVID. Now we're in summer slump. All of us are back to like, oh my gosh, like you worked a thousand hours a day afterwards. And now we're back to just being mentally mentally drained and it's super hard like i get probably the most like emails with questions and things is just like how do i get back to being motivated and i'm not a motivational coach but i can tell you a few things that uh, you can kill your excuses now the phrase kill your excuses is actually supposed to be f your excuses but you know i don't swear on this thing so i couldn't do that Killing is probably pretty bad too. But either way, we all have excuses. The problem with our excuses, uh, other than the awesome, you know, excuses are like uh, buttholes. Everybody's got one. Some stink worse than others. It's that same thing. It's everybody has excuses and the excuses are what kill you, right? If you know somebody who's not in it with their brain or they're not making money right now or they're having hard times, or they're letting it get to you or letting it get to them and this could be you this very well could be you and i'm here just to kind of say i want to help you get out of it the mental side of business is the hardest hardest part of business you guys can clean a window you guys can pressure wash a house clean a roof that's easy right you can run a business you're obviously doing it some of us could be better at certain things than others. But either way, the excuses side, the mental, the getting your brain to do what you think is best and know it's right is the hardest part. Because I'll circle back to the, the whole premise of this that I say all the time is that no one cares. No one cares if you fail or succeed. No one does. So you're not on this pedestal of like other business owners like, oh man, if I make all this money, they're going to be proud of me. Oh man, they're going to be like, oh dude, that's it. They're cool. It's cool stuff. Hey, it's cool. I want to be there. I want to be that size company. I love what you've done, but no one cares. If the next day you went on a business, no one would care. Here's the truth of the matter is 
We have families. A lot of us have families. If we lost our, our job or we just decided to close doors or anything happened, we didn't have a job, we didn't have our businesses, for a second, they'd be, oh, man, that's so bad. That's terrible. But you're going to get another job. You can't live not having a job, right? You can't live without having some kind of income. Some kind of income. So everybody's a son, oh man, that's terrible. Well, I guess we're going to get on unemployment and uh, look for jobs. That's what's going to happen. It's the same reason that when you got into business, people go, oh wow, you're starting a small business? Wow, cool. What's your, uh, what's your like fallback plan? You know, like what, what's the, the backup plan if uh, everything doesn't work? What? No one's like, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. And they're like, oh, well, if that doesn't work, what are you going to do? I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to run a business. I'm going to succeed at business. And I'm going to have an awesome business. Like, that's a statement. That's not like, well, I hope that all happens. Right? But a lot of us get excuses to everything that we do. We kind of get burnt out a bit. And we kind of fall out of love with our business. And the, the, the truth is that no one cares. So it's up to you to do something about it. It's up to you to change your brain. And the brain is the hardest, hardest thing to change. But let's talk about it either way. The first thing that you need to do with all your excuses and everything else is get your mind right. Being that that's the hardest thing to do, it is the most important thing to do. This whole episode and everything that you can do, every positive thing you listen to, every podcast that gets you ripped and ready, every knowledgeable thing that you do is all to get your brain back on board. It's all to get back in love with what we do. Because business only succeeds if there's passion. It only succeeds if there's passion. Make a t-shirt out of that. Business only succeeds if there's passion. And the reason is, is there's so many things that we do. Some of us, now some of us are in that funk, so I'm not talking to those people quite yet. But some of us just make money without doing anything. We've gotten that port partner business that just comes in, right? And it's really easy to be like, oh, all right, well, I'm taking a break. I'm going to sail on this thing for a while. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to see what happens. But the big side of it is, is that at one point you had passion. You had that excitement. It was the reason you built this business. You did everything you could. You worked super hard. Somebody would not work as many hours as we do. We can't turn it off. Every waking hour, it's in your brain. For two seconds, it's in your brain. You may watch TV for a second and all of a sudden be like, oh wait, tomorrow I got that pressure. I got to make sure that uh, oil is changed in the, right? It's always in your brain. Owning a business Starting a business, that's not a job. That is a lifestyle. That is who you are now. Your business is who you are. Now, a lot of us go, yeah, you got to disconnect. I work four hours. Yeah, you do. You might. You might have gotten to that point. You might have people in place, but your business is also not exploding like it did in the beginning. The first few years of business, you're doubling numbers, tripling numbers. There's guys out there doing hundreds of thousands of dollars year one. Year two, right? By year three, there's companies that have made a million dollars. That does not happen without passion. And passion's all in your brain. If you have that fire like you did in the beginning, that's what gets you to the next step. And some of us lose that. You may be lost right now. You may be like, yeah, that's cool, passion, blah, blah, blah. But I don't care. I don't care right now. It's dark and cloudy. Things suck. And I want to go watch TV. We all do. Burnout's a real thing, man. Burnout is a real thing. I hit it year six. Like six to eight. Those two years were just like the crap years of like, I watched a lot of YouTube. I watched a lot of YouTube in my office. Like, oh, great, guys. Let's go get everything all right. All the trucks leave. And I'm like, another day. Let's wait for five o'clock. Right? And that is where your mind is. If your mind goes to a dark place, it is so hard to get out of that. The big thing people always say is like, if you break a leg, you go to the hospital, right? You break a leg, somebody looks and goes, Ooh, yep, your leg is broken. Got to fix that. But in mental issues, like, man, I'm burnt out. I just don't have the love. I don't have the passion for this. People go, oh, that's okay. Pat, pat, pat. You'll get it back. What about that plan B? Are you still going to go, you know, 
go work for your uh, father-in-law? That's what people do. They don't fix the problem. They're just like, oh, but, yep, your leg's broken. Ah, I guess you're not walking anymore, huh? All right, how about that wheelchair we talked about? But mental is a different thing. Mental is so much harder. It's up to us to get out. And the only way that we can break through the fog, break through just like the darkness is changing in ourselves. A big thing that I do is I plan. Like when I fall out of love, I just throw everything off my desk, put my paper down. I'm like, whatever, swear naughty word that you want to throw into that. I'm like, you know what? I'm planning everything. I'm going to put down a plan. I'm going to go ahead and do all of my marketing. I'm going to redo my marketing. I'm going to redo my marketing calendar. I'm going to redo my focus on my website. I'm going to plan out that I want to have this uh, website done. I'm going to do all of this stuff and I'm going to set goals with my planning. A lot of us dream, right? A dream is just a thought. Oh, that'd be nice. And that would be nice if there was a six foot cheeseburger. That was my dream, right? But guess what? You could take that six foot cheeseburger and go, that's nice, and never do anything with it. Or you could take that and go, you know what? I could make that six foot cheeseburger. Here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to make a bun. I'm going to find a baker that can make a bun. That's it. Guess what? You've just turned your dream and you started planning your dream. A plan or writing your dream down or how to get to the dream is a plan. A plan can be followed. A dream cannot. So you have to set those goals. You have to go, okay, I'm going to redo everything. Where am I going to be in one month from now? Boom. This is where I need to be. Like everything is falling off. Like I'm stuck at this $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 a month. I'm stuck here. I need to get bigger. Where am I going to go next month? I'm doing a 25% increase, depending on the year. We're pre-fall right now. Like what you do now is going to explode and fall, right? So I go, hey, here's what we do. Last year. In fall, I did 100,000 in the three months of fall. This year, and listen, when I talk numbers, I'm throwing even numbers out there. So if you're not even anywhere close to that, don't think that this isn't for you. I could say last fall, I did $5,000. Last fall, I did $10,000 and didn't have to work for somebody else. It doesn't matter the number. The number is your number. You need to know your number, not me. Last year, I did 100,000. I did 10,000, whatever the number is. This fall, I'm going to do 20% more. After COVID, I know this year is already sucky. I know that my planning from the beginning of the year has already been trash because I had two months of sitting on my thumb. I'm going to do 20% more. How is it going to look? How is that 20% going to look? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show myself, write it down what a month from now looks like. A month from now, we're in the start of fall. I'm going to do next month, September when I'm recording this. In October, I'm going to do X amount. In November, I'm going to do X amount. This is the last quarter starts. Starts in 15 days from when the show comes out. Ish. 10 days. The new quarter starts. What are you going to do that quarter? Guess what? That ends the year after the quarter. Great. Quarter's done. What am I going to do next year? You have to plan it out. And you have to tell yourself how you're going to get there. Because here's the thing. If you can plan what you're doing next week, what you're doing per day, it's all bite size. The like super morbid thing is you could eat an entire cow. I'm a huge meat eater. So I could eat a whole cow. But you can't eat a whole cow like that. Wow. You have to break it into bites. The smaller the bite, the more manageable it is. If you just said, hey, you just take a little nibble every time. Yeah, it may take you a year to get there at nibbles. But you're going to eat a whole cow. That's crazy. Think about that. You, If you eat meat... You've eaten an entire cow throughout your lifetime, more than likely. You did it over time. You don't look at a cow and go, well, I could do that now. So people that go out there and they're like, hey, next year I'm doing a million. How are you going to get there? Ah, work hard. <laughs> that's, that's dumb. Let's be honest. If you're just like, oh, I'm going to do this, and you don't know how you're getting there, that's like, man, I'm going to Florida. How? Where are you? What part of Florida are you going? Where it's nice. How are you getting there? I'll get there somehow. Like, okay, that's cool. But if I come to you and I say, hey, guess what? I'm going to Orlando to see Bobby Walker. And I'm going 
October 15th through the 20th. I'm going to fly on Delta. Guess what? You just broke it down into all the pieces that needed to be answered. You figured out how you're getting there, what you're getting there, and guess what? It's not a dream. It's not I'm going to Florida someday, hopefully, huh? Florida, yeah, God's waiting room. No. I just planned it. I put the plan into motion. I can make that happen. That's why you plan. That's why you set goals. Getting that mindset, now all of a sudden you're back. This is just a piece of it. Piece of all these things that get put back together. You're planning. Now, after that planning happens, you're working eight hours a day, at least working eight hours a day. Yes, some of us work four, some of us don't have stuff to do, but guess what? When your mind is jacked up, you're going to work eight hours a day, every single day, even when you don't have eight hours of work. We've said that a hundred times. If you're letting yourself leave early, or you're doing a couple hours and you're like, oh man, I don't know what else to do. You're failing yourself. Those Eight hours of yesterday will never come back to you. If you were unproductive eight hours yesterday, yesterday was a bad day, right? Your mind wasn't right. It was rainy, cloudy. You slept till noon. Then you woke up, made a couple calls, hung out at a bar. That's what you did. Guess what? That eight hours will never come back to you. It'll never come back to you. People who sit in a bar all the time will never, ever leave the bar because that's their life. That's what they're doing. That's their new focus, right? If you work eight hours a day on your business, no matter what, even if you don't have eight hours of work to do, that's how you succeed. You use all of that. This is building this thing. It's getting your brain back into it because this is what you do. It's building that fire, that passion. I don't have any windows to clean today. What else am I going to do, man? I'm going to look at my website. I'm going to go through all my pictures. I'm going to do some editing on pictures that I've been taking and get them over to my web dude, maybe Justin Monk, because that's who I love. That's who does my stuff. Justin Monk, Monk SEO. Look him up. He does amazing, amazing work. Tell him I said what's up and he'll hook you up. But anyway, if you do all that, now that's, okay, cool. That's going to be two hours, man. I'm going to do two hours. Guess what? What's the next hour? I'm going to do a Craigslist ad. I do Craigslist ad every single day. Refresh it. I'm going to do a hiring ad. I'm going to do a, uh, what are we going into fall? So I'm going to do gutter cleaning. I'm going to do some gutter cleaning ads. It's free. Boom. Done. What's the next thing? Well, I'm still in a hiring stage because it's fall. I'm going to contact some schools, see if I can't get put onto their boards, onto their, uh, you know, message boards. Hey, looking for college students to uh, work. It's horrible timing for that being nobody's going to school right now. But either way, you know what I'm trying to say. After all of that, after all of that, you can find eight hours a day to do every single day. Guess what? Okay, I'm done with that. What am I going to do? Detail my truck. I detail it every single week. My trucks get detailed because I'm not rolling around in a dumpster. People are going to look at my stuff and be impressed. I'm going to clean my truck. I'm going to organize my gear. I'm going to buy the gear that I need and and look at the stuff that I need to swap out. There is a 100% chance you could work eight hours a day every single day because guess what? You fill all the empty space after that in with sales. You're doing sales, man. You're doing follow-ups from the old stuff. You're going to the new places. You're doing sales. Put your brain back into it. Yes, you have to force yourself in the beginning. Get your mind right. A big part of this is all surrounding yourself with people and knowledge in the industry. I want to tell you something. Facebook groups are awesome. There's a lot of knowledge out there and a lot of good people. But guess what? There's also trolls. There's also people who are going to hurt your feelings. It's not a safe space. Whatever. Enter your snowflake comments here. It's not. It's still Facebook. But guess what? There are groups that are like that. There's tight-knit groups of people that are so encouraging. There are so so many posts on these forum groups that you can look through. Somebody says, uh... What's a better soap, Dawn or Glass Gleam? Ignore that one. Go to the next one. Filter that crap. You do it in all your regular life. You go through TV channels. Click, 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 click. That sucks, 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 sucks. Oh, that one's good. Do that on Facebook. Don't report dumb stuff because you're somehow offended by it. You're focused on the wrong crap. Don't focus on the bad stuff. I don't ever want to see any of you people that are listening or watching 
be somebody who reports something on a Facebook group that didn't need to be reported. Now, if it's a horrible, you know, uh, hate comment or some spammers or something, report it. But if you're focused on the negative, you're never going to see the positive. The only people in a race who are looking at everybody else is everybody behind number one. The first place person always looks forward. They don't look at everybody else. The number two guy is always staring at number one. If you focus on everybody else, you're not going to be first. And especially that when your brain's not right. Surround yourself with that and surround yourself with positive people. Because somebody who's positive in your life is going to translate positivity. You're like, well, I don't even know what to do. Great. Guess what? Get a coach. Get a coach. I don't I don't know. I don't have the money for that, right? Well, then you don't get a coach. Like, don't say you don't have money, then you're not going to change that. If you literally don't have money for that stuff and you can't invest in yourself, don't invest in yourself. But every one of you that's watching or listening has the money to invest in yourself. Think about coaching. Think about how cheap, cheap it is to get in with a coach. The, the people I coach myself don't, I, I don't have anybody in there who ever looks at the price. That's not even the, the concept of it. It's the like, if you put something in, you're getting something out. I have coaches myself. I go through coaching and have coaches. And the reason is, is because this is what we want to do. I need to surround myself with people better than me. I need to surround myself with people smarter than me. And I need to surround myself with people who make more than me and have bigger businesses than me. Because if you're the smartest, richest person in the room, you're in the wrong stinking room. There's a law of averages in people. And I want you to look at this for one second. Go back and look at a group of your friends. Go back and look at who you hung out with. Your friends are all the same level. They're all the same level. Otherwise, you left that group of friends. I'll tell you. This isn't me. I know other people like this. But there's a group of friends who still are bouncing around on jobs still to this day. They're still out there smoking pot all the time and just like going to the bars every weekend being hung over, they got a bunch of kids with a bunch of different moms that they don't take care of. Like that's their life. But guess what? That's the whole group's life. That's the whole group of people. I remember those people. I remember them from high school and look at them now and like, whoa, they have not changed, right? The whole group is the same. You can't be the one, like you can't hang out with a bunch of friends who all make, you know, seven twenty-five an hour And do anything because what you're doing is on another level. They're not understanding running a business. They're not understanding making $100 an hour. They're not spending money on fun things like you are. It just doesn't work. So what happens is is the people you surround yourself with, they all start to mend and become on the same level. And here's the thing. Here is a life hack for you and I'm telling you. If you surround yourself with people doing way better than you, you're going to do way better. You cannot hang around people who have succeeded in life, who run amazing companies, whose companies are extremely healthy. Not just big. Big doesn't matter. You can't be around a bunch of people like that and not get to their level. Because if you come in and you're like, oh man, I just don't have the motivation. Everyone else in that group's like, what are you talking about, man? Heck yeah, guess what I'm doing today? I got a giant sale closing today. I got a $30,000 sale that I'm signing on today. Oh, well, I slept till noon and then ate some Hot Pockets. Like, that doesn't work. They're going to be like, oh, cool. Like, And then the rest of the people on there will be like, 30000 man, that's awesome. High five, man. I got a big one that works too. I'm hoping to close next week. Guess what? I'm traveling to go talk to a new building owner is a property manager. I got to fly out to where they are located because they got a bunch of buildings in my area. Guess what, man? I just bought the brand new X2 with an ultra pole, the destroyer pole. I could do 90 feet with my pole. Oh, well, you know, I still, I use my ladder. That's like 22 years old. All right, cool. What does everybody else in the group do? Man, you're getting the new equipment? Dude, that's so awesome. You're going to be so efficient. You can work so fast with that. You can run multiple poles with it. Here's what happens. Is that the group or herd mentality will always start to level. And they either bring you up or you just don't stay in the group. 
You either go up to everybody's level or you're in a group that brings you down. And I'm telling you, it's so hard to remove toxicity from your life, but it's so essential. Because if you look at the people, the family, the whatever around you, if they're toxic, if every time you go talk to them, like, oh man, everything has hit the fan. This sucks, man. It's just whatever, dude. I don't even... Well, then you're like, well, yeah, man, this really does kind of suck, you know, the economy, you know, it'll get better. But they're like, it's not going to get better, man. Not until the election. Election's like in November, man. The new president's not even going to start till next year. And you're like, that's like, I mean, that's like a long time. Like, what happens? If everybody around you is talking like that, you start to talk like that. That's how we get in funks. That's how our mind just falls out. If you surround yourself with just yourself or other people who don't understand what you're doing, that's what you fall into. If you hang out with people who like to go drink, guess what you do? You like to go drink. If you hang out with people who like to go smoke, guess what you do? Surround yourself with people that you want to be. Get a new group of friends. doesn't mean ditch your other friends and family. Maybe do a little less time with them. Slowly wean them out because you're on another level. You're going to be on another level. Get your mind right in all of this and find a group that does that for you. Find a mentor. Find someone that you want to be like. You're always going to be you. But you can be at certain person level. I uh, There's a lot of people in this industry that I love. Like the way their business is. Like just everything. The branding. Man. So every time I talk to this dude, things are awesome. Like he's got so many ideas. Things are great, man. He's running. Like Wesley Bloom. If you know him, he's a good dude. Doesn't listen to the podcast. I don't think. Wants to be on the podcast, uh, but good guy. Everything you talk to him, he's like, yeah, uh, here's a picture of this job we just did. It's pretty cool, man. Look at this. The building's phenomenal. But in the background, I see everybody with their full color stitched logos. The logos on their bucket. Every bucket looks like it's brand new package. Everything is the same stuff as numbered. That's what I'm looking at. Look at your company, man. Well, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. I just, I like to... That is where that person is. That's where I want to be. Surround yourself with people who are going to do that to you. Because not everybody will. And I just talked to somebody now. And it's probably been maybe three weeks. Who had somebody super toxic in their life that was bringing them the down. And every time they talk, they're like, yeah, man. It's like my dad. You know, every time I start talking about it, he just he brings me back to reality. And no. What are you talking about? Do you think... That Jeff Bezos, however you pronounce this, whatever, he's doing now $3 billion a day. I want to say that number's right. $3 billion a day. Think about that. Who knows that? What about Bill Gates? What about some of these big guys, Warren Buffett? These guys are on the top tier of their company. No one they hang out with can understand what they do. It's the same reason if you have toxic family or friends, they bring you down. It's like, oh man, dude, how's this economy doing? God, it's got to suck, huh? Nobody wants to do it. You're like, well, yeah, kind of, you know. Yeah, man, if I were you, I would just like get a job right now and then just do this window cleaning thing after. Right? What happens if you hang out with somebody who you're like, dude, this has been sucking, man. It's just nothing. They're like, yeah, but the economy's coming back, man. It's going to come back bigger than it ever has. Like you're on the cusp of this thing blowing up. You're like, you think? You're like, yes, man. Here's why. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, dude, you're right, man. It is going to blow up. Oh, dude, I'm so excited for this to go back. Being, you know, you have a company. I got a company. Dude, I'm so excited, man. I'm doing everything I can right now to get ready for it because it's going to be a roller coaster ride, man. I'm going to make all that money that I lost earlier back up and fall. It's going to be huge. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It translates to you. If you hang out positive people, you'll be positive. I'm telling you. Remove the toxicity, I'm telling you. Even if you minimize the toxicity, it gets it back out of your brain. Surround yourself with positive people. You will be positive. There are no emos in a group of sunshine. There just isn't. It doesn't happen that way. And the last thing on this whole thing is that nobody cares about you. Nobody cares 
about you like you should. Let me rephrase that. Obviously, people care about you. No one cares work harder. That's the whole thing. If you sit back and you're like, ah, oh, it's just doing, man. It's just, it's you. You need to get on board with everything. You are the one that makes this a success or makes this a long and painful experience to failure. It's you. You're the one. Close your eyes right now. Close your eyes and let everything else out of your brain. Just let it out, out of your brain. When you're alone with just yourself in your brain, you understand that theory. That is just you. Yes, you may have a partner. Yes, you may have a whatever. But guess what? You can't control somebody else. You can't. That's why there's prisons. That's why people get shot. That's why people do crack. Crack's illegal. They try to control that, but they can't control people. You can't control someone else, but you can control yourself. It's up to you, and if you dig deep, if you get that fire, that passion back, however it happens, and it does not come back right away, it's work. If you get that fire, that passion back, now all of a sudden you're back to being a beast. That's what we want you to be. It's a beast. Anyway, I hope it helps. I hope we get our brain right. Getting our brain right is so stinking hard. I'm telling you guys. But if you want one of these cheesy little stickers, let me know. All you need to do when you put an order in is tell me. Throw me a sticker. These are limited edition stickers, even though they're little and cheesy, but they're small enough to like put on your bucket on a belt. Try to make them really small. But every time we sell a batch of them or give those uh, batch away, we're going to get another batch of a different design. So it would be kind of cool. You could have like a plethora of awesome, cool kid certified stickers. So let me know. But if you want to put an order in with me, it would be the ultimate awesomeness. The best high five you could possibly give me. Like, I want to bring my, my, my youngest daughter in here with the big eyes and say, thank you. Because that's what it does. It really does help me out, guys. I really do appreciate it. 862-312-2026. Let me put all your orders in. Virtual high five. Yada, yada, yada. Get your mind right, man. Go back and watch some content. Learn. Surround yourself with people and knowledge. Get the knowledge. And uh, you'll get yourself out of this. I hope you guys are doing awesome. If you really do need anything, please do let me know. But until next week, then, go out there, remove some toxicity, kill your excuses, more importantly, be epic.